So 2017 sees the launch of the new Jumper EZ Book 3. Now this new model has the Apollo Lake N3350, which is the first time I'll be testing out this CPU. It's dual core, it has 4GB of 1600MHz RAM, 64GB of internal storage, that's eMMC spec, but it also does have a spare M2 SSD bay, just like the Chewy Lackbook 14.1. The laptop has a completely plastic build that actually turns out to be slightly lighter than the Lapbook 14.1 coming in at 1.2 kilos. So we get these attractive looking slim bezels. The screen is still 14.1 inches. It's 1080p just like the EasyBook 2. But they have changed the panel. It's a TN panel which has good horizontal viewing angles but the vertical viewing angles aren't particularly good. So that means the screen really does need to be viewed directly front on, otherwise you'll see the colours tend to just wash out straight away. So you need to bear that in mind, but as long as you have it facing you, the screen doesn't look bad at all. It has a maximum brightness of 380 lux, which is quite bright, and it has a matte coating on it, so very good for reflections and it can be used outdoors. Jumper decided to place the webcam right here on the lower bezel, just like the Dell XPS series. Now the resolution is VGA so the quality is quite poor, it's pixelated and because of its location it tends to look up your nose. The top bezel isn't that slim, I do believe they would have still had space to actually place it in the traditional location like on most laptops. For ports we have DC in on the left side, a USB 3 port, mini HDMI for video out. On the right, micro SD card, USB 2 port, and a 3.5mm headphone jack that supports microphones. The touchpad is reasonably sized, it supports gestures, it has two integrated mouse buttons, and overall not too bad. The keyboard is my biggest complaint of the EasyBook 3. It has so much flex and bounce, I really wish that Jumper had improved on this because the EasyPad 2 suffered from the same issue. It had a lot of flex, and it makes the typing experience not really that great. I often feel like I have to hit down harder on the keys just to get it to register the letter that I'm typing at the moment. Even above and below the type pad here, the touchpad, sorry, you can see there is a little bit of flex there. Now the keyboard does have a shortcut to disable at least the touchpad, which is something good, but it does lack controls of the screen brightness. You're gonna to have to go through your typical menu here in Windows to adjust and tweak the brightness setting. The lid has a small amount of flex in it, and overall the build quality I find isn't as good as the Chewy Lapbook 14.1. While this may be lighter, 200 grams lighter, it just doesn't feel as solid and as rigid, especially the keyboard, compared to the Lapbook 14.1. Just to point out too that both of the USB ports will power external hard drives, which is really good because the Jumper EasyBook 2 for me personally, I could not get it to power any of my external hard drives. At least they have corrected that now in the EasyBook 3. No doubt you would have come across this notebook here, which is the Lapbook 14.1. That's from Chewy. That is the main competitor. Now that one there has a quad-core N3450 Apollo Lake processor. So that offers up two more cores, slightly better performance. It also has a better keyboard. And comparing the screens of the both, of them there, I would go for Chewy's, which I believe is superior. Battery-wise, both of these machines are very similar, but overall, I do like the Lapbook 14.1. I believe that is a superior machine. We're looking at the screen here indoors now. Straight on, it looks fine. Perhaps a little bit of a cool white, the tint of the screen, but the color reproduction is good. Good blacks, and overall, not too bad. EasyBook 3 has two downward firing speakers. So there's one here in front of the front foot and the second one right here. Now, normally I don't like downward firing speakers because if you happen to have this on your lap as you would use a laptop, then they will be blocked and they won't sound as good. But these speakers are louder than the Chewy 14.1s. Let's have a listen to them. They have a hint of bass to them. There is a little bit of distortion there at 100% volume. Now the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack supports microphones and the sound output, at, output from that is clear. Sounds good. I have no complaints at all with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Just a few things here I wanted to point out with the system. So the internal storage, it's an eMMC 
at say 64 gigabyte Toshiba and the speeds of that I will show you in just a second when I go through my benchmarks. Wireless is a Realtek chipset, this is very common and unfortunately only wireless N, so it's not wireless AC dual band which would be a lot faster like what the uh, Chewy Lapbook 14.1 has. You see we have a dual core CPU, so not the typical quad core Apollo Lakes that I have already benchmarked and tested out. Performance multi-core scores of course are going to be a lot lower on this particular chipset here. There's really nothing else of interest to point out there in the device manager. So Windows 10 fully activated, no problems with that you see. And we have 3.8 gigabytes usable. Now here's the micro SD card slot, it's running at USB 2 speeds. So it's not hooked up by a USB 3 reader unfortunately. And here is the speed of the Toshiba eMMC. Very poor write speeds, 22 megabytes per second, that is really not fast enough. So writing and moving files onto it, I did notice that to be quite a bit slower than normal. Now if you want to speed up this system, you can actually install a M2 spec 22 by 42 or even larger, I think you might be able to fit in there, SSD. Now it has to be SATA 3 and that will remove that bottleneck and help pick up the speed of the system. So overall things feel just fine. It feels almost just like the quad core Apollo Lakes that I've been tested out when using Edge, when moving around in Windows. No problems with that. And just loading up Tech Tablet's website here. I'll just load it again. It comes in quite quickly. Scrolling speeds and everything is very smooth. And I even have a 4K demo here that I was just testing out. No dropped frames when streaming in 4K. But that performance is fine. See, everything like that is just as fast as the quad core until you move over to something that's more demanding that uses multi cores. Like here I have Photoshop. Now I'm just moving a high res image here in the background, and you see that's a little bit choppy and slow moving that around and just applying various filters, moving layers. Feels slower than the quad core counterparts like the N3450 that's in the Chewy Lap book 14.1. But you can do some basic image editing here. Minor stuff, you're able to do that. Docs and things like that is perfectly fine on this type of system here. So a couple of other things I wanted to point out. Here's the wireless speeds. Now, because it's got wireless in, it turned out to be a little bit slower than the Chewy Lap book. I managed to get around 40 megabits per second at the same time. Whereas here on the Easy Book 3, I only got 18 download. The upload speed for some reason was exactly the same, but the wireless range seems good because it's an all plastic body, so no problems with the range at least, but the wireless performance does suffer a little there. And here is finally Geekbench 4. Single core score comes out actually a little bit higher, so not too bad there, but the multi core score of course is lower because this only has two cores. And finally last one I did actually test, someone asked me to run this, was Antutu from the Windows Store. You can see there the score is more or less the same as the Apollo Lake N3450. So I'm going to check out two games, that's Counter-Strike and then League of Legends, just to see how they perform on the dual-core CPU here, and most importantly, have a look at thermals. Good. This is one area where they have actually done their homework. Jumper has put some copper, a nice copper heatsink over the top of that Apollo Lake. Will not get anywhere near the temperatures that the Chewy did, which got up to 99 degrees. You can see at the moment, well the highest it's got up to here is 67. But I'm gonna test out some games and really push it hard. So performance in Counter-Strike, you can see it's really bad. This is very poor. Frame rate's only about 10 frames per second, dipping down to, I've seen it as low as two or three frames per second. Not playable at all. You can see League of Legends running in 720p is only just playable, getting a frame rate of around 30 frames per second on the lower settings here, as you can see. So this is definitely not really a gaming notebook at all. Very poor performance out of the dual cores here. And temperatures, I've now had this on for quite some time, running League of Legends in the background. And I'll see with HW Info that maximum temperature is getting up to 76 degrees. So that is a positive there.
that they have done a very good job with the thermals jumper because they've used that copper heatsink on there it will not get as hot as the lapbook 14.1 does which reached 99 degrees and actually went into sleep mode this at least does not happen with this model now battery life something that is very important of course on a laptop here we have eight hours of use in my little test that I did so I had the brightness set to around 30 40 percent which is actually quite bright for indoor use perfectly fine and I managed to get eight hours and eight minutes a good score this is on par with what I'm getting out of the Chewy Lapbook 14 now charging time seemed slower than Lapbook 14 it took around five hours to fully charge it and it had trouble getting up to 100% charge for some reason it would stop around 97% and just would not reach 100%. I don't know what is going on there, whether that's just an issue with my unit. So to recap here, we do have a rather nice panel, but it's not as good as the Lapbook 14.1s. The keyboard has a lot of flex and bounce. I don't particularly like it. For this reason alone, I would go for the Lapbook 14.1. We also are missing two cores. It doesn't have wireless AC like the Lapbook 14.1. And the battery life, while it's similar, this can get around eight hours. The laptop can also get about eight hours. This is slightly lighter, but at the end of the day, I think you know what the answer is there. Go for the Chewy Lapbook 14. I see no real reason to buy this unless you can pick it up for a significantly lower price. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I hope to catch you back in the channel soon with more up and coming reviews on tech out of China.